So today I want to step back just a little bit and talk to those of you who haven't really moved forward too much on your plan of buying a house. This video is all about explaining to you guys how to buy a house, what the fundamentals of getting a mortgage are, how the process works. Now, this is very much just a loose description of it. I'm not going to go into massive amounts of detail. I'll make other videos later on that will go into things like the fees in very, very minute detail. But for the moment, I just want to give you guys a rundown of how the process works. And again, like I said before, not everybody's going to need to know this, but for those of you who are only starting out and don't even really understand how it all works, then this little video is exactly what you need to watch. So the first thing you need before you start off is some sort of savings. So before you even approach a bank at all, you need to have a certain amount of money saved up in your bank account. Now, normally people ask first time buyers for around 10% of the purchase price of the house as a deposit. You also need to factor in things like your stamp duty after you buy the house, which is around 1%. And then you have to factor in things like the valuation fee that you will have to pay an estate agent or a valuer to come out and tell you that the house is worth how much you want to pay for it. Then also you might need a structural survey if you're out like me and you're buying a house that could fall down in the morning and you just don't know. So a structural survey is another one. They come in maybe around 500, depending on how much detail you want from the surveyor or the engineer, they can go up in price a lot. But again, these are things that you need to have money set aside for. It's just one of those things that on top of your 10% for your deposit, you also have other little fees that come in along the way, like your solicitor's fees and stuff like that. So solicitor's fees could come in around a thousand, maybe 1500 by the time all of the registration fees and all are paid. So just have savings, start with your 10%. And if you can get your 10% together, then at least you're at a stage where you can go and apply for your mortgage and find out how much you're going to get approved for. So once you have your savings together, the next natural step is to go into a bank and try and get mortgage approval. Now, all the banks ask for different things, but then they all kind of ask for the same stuff as well. They want things like pay slips, they want proof of income, they want bank statements, they want your ID, all this kind of stuff. Just basically things that guarantee them or at least give them some sort of good indication that you're going to pay the mortgage back when they give you the money. <laughs> Once they have all this information, they're going to give you a thing called approval in principle. And what that is, is kind of like your maximum budget that you have to go and look for a house. So when I bought my house, for example, my approval in principle was for 110,000. That was the max they were going to give me. And I had to find a house that I could buy the house and at the time do the upgrade works that I wanted as well for under the 110,000. So I ended up buying a house for 80 and then I had 30 left over to do some works, just getting services sorted, you know, just upgrading electricity and stuff like that. So that's what you're looking at. Your approval in principle will only last a certain amount of time. So maybe three months, maybe six months. There's always a time limit on that. And the reason they have it is because if your circumstances change, they can't just indefinitely offer you a mortgage blanket offer you it for the whole of your future. So obviously the three or six month thing is just a way of them forcing you to check back in and they will then of course check your income and your statements and stuff again if anything has changed and revise the number. I mean you never know you could be earning more in six months and then you don't want to be offered less at all now do you? Well you do because you don't want to be spending a fortune on a house when you can buy a cheap house. Spend your money on other stuff okay? <laughs> the main thing with this approval in principle is that it offers agents who are selling houses a proof that you are kind of approved for a mortgage. So a lot of the time, if you go to put in an offer on a house, an agent can ask you for proof of your approval in principle. And what that shows them is that you're a serious buyer. You have the funds organized in the background. It's not like your final offer letter of your mortgage, but it just shows them that you're not just some tire kicker that's going around putting in offers everywhere and just seeing, you know, will you get accepted? And then they can go and apply for a mortgage. So this is one of those things that's important to have before you start looking at houses or else you're going to be in for this world of disappointment when you keep missing out on stuff because you have to go back and apply for your mortgage after you've found a house that you really, really love. So you have your savings, 
you have your approval in principle. What do you do now? Well, this is the fun part. Now you get to look for a house. My favorite part by far. It's kind of stressful as well, because obviously in that same process, you're placing offers and you're getting outbid and it's just, it can be quite stressful, but it is by far the most exciting part, apart from the day you get your keys. So get out there on websites, start looking for houses, look on my feed over on Instagram, just look everywhere. I'm talking newspapers, farmers journal, everywhere, done deal, anywhere that you can find ads for random things, look for houses and make sure to find one that gives you enough left over in your budget if you need to do remedial works on the house as well. <laughs> so when you're at the stage where you're finally ready to put in offers on houses and stuff, this is the time you need to get the legalities of the whole thing sorted out. So get in touch with a couple of solicitors, get a price from them for what it costs for them to do that side of the stuff on your transaction and definitely shop around. I mean, I think my solicitor cost a thousand euro when I got mine and bear in mind now this was in the Celtic Tiger. So stuff was not just cheaper because it's a longer time ago. Stuff was so expensive back then. I think it was a thousand euro and then another 500 by the time all the fees were paid to, you know, register the property and stuff like that. So 1500 was around what I paid in total. Um, and really all they do is they handle the legalities of your side of the transaction. They also protect you. Like it's their job to mind you and to make sure that you don't kind of get screwed over. So if you think about it, the estate agent is representing the seller. They have no obligation to you. They have obligations to the law in Ireland to do their job properly. They have obligations to their seller to get them the most money, but they have zero obligation to you. So this solicitor is kind of like your little safety net, I suppose. They check things like, are there any liens on the house? Are there any mortgages or anything that are still on it? Are there any rights away in place? Is there duplicate owners of it? Can the deeds be found? Things like that. This is a huge thing worth every single penny you pay. But keep in mind that prices vary all across the board. Solicitors in cities like Dublin can be a lot more expensive than rural solicitors. But then in the same vein, the competition is higher in city. So sometimes you can get really, really good deals. You need to shop around. You can pay anywhere from 800 to 1500 euro plus for this kind of thing. So do your homework and find someone that you can afford. And I would say, don't feel like you have to get a solicitor in the place where you're buying your house. You have to go up to the solicitor maybe two or three times during the process. So get them somewhere that's close to where you live right now so that it's easy enough for you to pop in and sign things. Or if they find anything and they need to meet you, it's just a lot easier to get it close to where you're living at the moment. So the next stage is making an offer. And really all that is, is just ringing the estate agent and telling them you'd like to make an offer. And then they'll tell you if the offer you make is below any offers they have at the moment or if it's above it they will get in touch with the owner and they will tell them that the offer has been placed and then it just kind of takes a couple of days of them kind of talking to the owner getting back to you and it's kind of just this back and forth a little bit it's not overly complicated. This is the time when you will be asked to show the proof that you actually have mortgage funds arranged so that approval in principle will crop up here a lot. This is one of those things where you need that letter, you need a scan of it, have it on your phone, be able to send it in and prove to them that you have your funds in place. And other than that, when you're making your offer, remember that it's a lot easier to go up with your offers than it is to backtrack and go back down. So just start low enough and be willing to increase if you need to. So once you're lucky enough that you have an offer accepted, you will pay your deposit. And what that does really is it just changes your offer from being just an offer to the property going sale agreed. And once the property goes sale agreed, then all the solicitors just start beavering away in the background and preparing the contracts for everything to just be finalized. Now this can take three to six weeks. It's not an instant thing. In the age we live in right now, we expect stuff to be done in 24 hours, 48 hours. It doesn't happen like that. There is work to be done in the background that you're paying good money to be done. So don't rush it, but just know that once you have your deposit paid, that it is fully refundable to you until you sign your contracts at the very last stage. 
So the last stage is called the signing. And really this is just signing the contracts to fully lock in the sale. At this stage, your refundable deposit becomes non-refundable and really it just gets really messy and icky if you try to back out after this stage. So this is a stage you need to be really, really sure you want to go ahead with. And once you do that, then it's just a matter of getting funds released and getting your keys, which can take a month. It can take a couple of weeks. It can take six months. It just, it's just the way stuff goes, but that's basically the last step of it. So you get your contract signed and you just wait then for the handover of keys and then you have your lovely house. I hope this is in some way kind of explained a bit how the process works. I'm sorry if I got highly distracted in the middle of this and went off on tangents but I think if you can just pick out the really important bits of what I said you'll get a kind of a feel for how it's meant to work it's not overly complicated it's really just get your mortgage in place start looking for houses you know get an offer in get an offer accepted prove you have the money to pay it and then let your solicitor do all the work and then everything just kind of comes together in the background and then you have a house see and it will be very stressful. Don't think it won't be stressful, but it will be over and you will have your house and you look back at it and go, no, my sale wasn't stressful at all. My purchase wasn't stressful at all. I'm the only person that didn't get stressed out by this. And your family are looking at you going, are you serious? I had to live with you and you were going through this. This was the worst time of my life. Like bar weddings, it's probably the most stressful thing for your family to go through with you. So just enjoy it and realize that it's going to be over and you're going to have your house and you won't even remember how stressful it was. So that's it. How to buy a house in a couple of easy, not too distracted steps. I am going to go now. Don't forget to hit the like button for me, just for me. And I'll be so delighted. Don't forget to follow if you're not following already. And don't forget that every Wednesday night, my newsletter goes out and it shows the 20 best properties that have come on the market in the last week in Ireland. It costs a fiver a month, so 125 a week. And it is just absolutely fantastic. Lots of jabbering, lots of getting distracted and lots of really, really cheap houses. So 